Yeah, it's hard to believe though that it's 20 years, isn't it? It is. It's a nice idea, but maybe we should start to rethink what we're doing. For every idea that we actually make, I'm not sure I think there's at least half a dozen that never make it. Yeah. Is this the coolest golf trolley in the world? Absolutely. It still is. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favourite looking of all the things we've this made so far. This is one of the big problems that we never quite solved was how do you hold that golf club in there and stop it from falling out? If it wasn't for this and for this idea, there wouldn't be a shipment golf really. Is this going to really work? And that's that's kind of the start of Stuart Golf, that question, isn't it? Yeah. Every product in the world starts like, starts like this. Everyone starts the same way. This is just above the workshop, but... Yeah. <laughs> excuse, <laughs> excuse the cool <laughs> This is what we um, call the museum. So... That one. Yeah. So this is... X1R001. This fills me with, with like dread. We used to hand engrave these. They're that horrible. Yeah, that's exactly it. it was, yeah. And you'd have to slide those little brass letters in, you remember? Yeah. And if it scratched the, the surface in, you could get right to the end and slit. You had to scrap it and start again. Start again, it's yeah. horrible. <laughs> this is the original chassis as well. Remember these thermoform chassis? Yeah. See, that was the, the original logo as well. The very original S was the same width as the yeah, Stuart Gold. Yeah, it was, yeah. Do you remember? Because you, you never liked it, did you? No. Do you remember the um, the first prototypes of this one? We had the um, the Sky Controller. Yeah, yeah. So we we had we had developed in the electronics, but we didn't have the mouldings and everything for our, for our own handset at the time. But the the button spacing that we had was more or less like the um, like the Sky remote control. So rather than basically having to pay whatever it's going to be twenty grand for the tooling for this or something. We bought like half a dozen Sky remote controllers and just put our electronics sets inside, yeah. inside the Sky remote to keep it dry. <laughs> so we're out playing golf um, with, our, with, our, with our prototypes with a Sky remote controller. And people are like, bloody hell, those Sky remotes are good these days. <laughs> <laughs> so what else have we got in here? So, well, that's it. So that's the first Q. Um, this is an R1. Yeah. The, the, original, the original R1 box, the thin one. Okay, so this must be then an F1. This is my favourite looking of all the things we've this made so far. Easy. Let's get this out. So, this was the the F1 because when we were developing it, it was the folding one. So we had this one folds up like this, and this was the first remote control golf trolley, small enough to go in a Porsche. That was the cool thing about this. But this was a real a real pioneering product at the time. So it was 2008 we launched this. So a completely bespoke golf bag that housed the main support and handle. Still looks great. <laughs> I still like it. Does, it. does it fit? Yeah. So handle comes out of golf bag and then this is the clever bit in here. So you lift up the handle, lift up this little shaft here and then you can see just underneath there, I'll lift this up a second. It push, pushes out these two little levers and they engage into the chassis. So this one movement is really elegant, locks the golf bag to chassis and also locks the front of the chassis to the back of the chassis all in one bit. So now when, when you sort of lift this up, the whole thing comes with it. Still look great. It does, doesn't it? Best looking product we've ever made, that is. But the problem is anyone buying it had to have our golf bag. So, and we couldn't make lots of different designs, so we just made lots of different colours, but it just wasn't going to cut it, unfortunately. We came out with the Q, which was only a couple of years ago, wasn't it? It's, a, it's got a lot of similarities to this. The Q, um, obviously, is, is its own product. It owes a lot to this. It does, yeah. Great product. All the early ones all end up in here. One point, we'll, we'll get the, the, the showroom sorted out in the factory and actually have these in there and explain what they are. I sold my business in June 99, completely unconnected to this. That's when we were in Florida on holiday, and that's when my dad came up with the, the thought. He basically said, let's turn the clubs up the other way so the, so the grips don't get wet when you're playing. Yeah. So that's where we all started. And that's, that's kind of the start of Stuart Golf, that question, isn't it? Yeah. And they come back from holiday, and this is, this is what we made. So concept number one, this was it, 1999. So clubs go in this way up, arranged on a little carousel system at the bottom, and then they all stay in there and you can organise your clubs nicely. You get to the one that you want, you spin it round, get to the front, 
take it out. Beautiful. We went from this one, which is obviously bits of MDF, a bit of Perspex, um, a bit of plumbing tube. Plumbing tube and some football. Football cones. Football cones. So this is number two. So this is what we made next. So this was what we made out of fiberglass. So we made a little form for it, didn't we? That was me and you did that. Are those the same doorknobs that we've got over in the kitchen? Got, yeah, they're in. I, I, got, I got a drawer full of them over in. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a putter clip. That's what that is. Because you couldn't, a putter wouldn't necessarily go in here. So you, need, you figure we need the putter all the time. So a putter can be in the door. If you're going to need that for pretty much, well, you're probably going to need that for every hole. But after this, it gets a bit more, a bit less Heath Robertson and a bit more engineering. So that's what that one is there. So this is when we started doing some proper design. So this is, we go from sort of garden shed prototype to a bit sort of more engineering. So this is after Dave and John got involved, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we're doing this on computers. These are, these are SLS parts and or 3D printed parts. You can see this is the start of, of the direction of, um, of styling that we were going in. This is one of the big problems that we never quite solved was how do you hold that golf club in there and stop it from falling out? So we're beginning to think, is this going to really work? <laughs> it's, it's a bit big and bulky. It's a nice idea, but we're beginning to think, mm, maybe maybe we should start to rethink what we're doing. Because we knew this was always going to be a bit of a, a, bit of a big product, it was always going to have to be like that, wasn't it? On, a, on some kind of base. Yeah. So we've been designing um, already, because uh, you're never going to carry this thing around, no. of course. We never believed in really in pulling golf trolleys around, no. which was the thing at the time. But if you could make a really good uh, tractor unit, as we were calling it in development, one of the powered base, and make this all fit together and somehow clip in, yeah. then you can have a really cool looking sort of space age um, golf trolley. That was the whole thing. So we started designing uh, motors and control systems and remote control. Um, so that was when remote control came in. We were like, because nobody was really doing it at the time. So, but we started looking at it and going, you know what, remote control, this is definitely the way to do this. Really the principles in that, so, okay, well, if you're going to do remote control, then what you need to do is make it really stable. Um, it's got to well, obviously work from a good range. It's got to be really stable and it's got to look great. You yeah. cover all those bases and then we've got a chance. That yeah. was our yeah. whole thing, wasn't it? So we had three years worth of work. Maybe we don't do this. Maybe let's just make an, a, a normal golf trolley that you can put any kind of golf bag on. So all this work went by the side. So I don't yeah. It's so far removed from what we, we now do. But actually, it, if it wasn't for this and for this idea, there wouldn't be a shuttle golf trolley. Yeah. It, it wouldn't even be here. Yeah. yeah, surprising what you can make in a little workshop and with bits of fiberglass and a bit of imagination, a bit of imagination and stuff. So let's have, let's have a quick look at this, at this picture over here. So we've got, so there's, there's some gems on here. Um, this one here, March 2004, first, the first X and R delivery. I was in my car. So that's that's you with um, with that, that other prototype. That's that one, isn't it? Oh, this. I mean, this is even even earlier on. Look, look. So basically, that's us trying to work out how to balance the product, isn't it? You know, there's bits of Dexy and still in the workshop. There, <laughs> <I>? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, this is cool. There's a, there's a nice story behind this. That's um, that's my granddad. That's Roy. That's uh, Dad's dad. But he was shorter than me, and he's obviously like three or four inches taller than me in that picture. So we did this photo shoot at Wentworth, but Grandad was supposed to be coming in for the for the shoot so we could get a photo together. And he got lost. He got lost. We did that photo, um, and that was a guy called Fred McCluskey who was um, who was working for us at the time, working on, yeah. on sales and marketing to get us launched. Um, so this is in the in the early days of Photoshop. So Grandad then turned up. We did a photo again. The um, Laura, the work from, uh, from my brother, he uh, she took Grandad's head, put it on Fred McCluskey's body, um, who was a big six foot um, a northerner. So, so then, for just for fun, we had that that photo printed on business cards. He, he had cancer, didn't he? Yeah. Um, and so he was um, when he was going to his um, bridge nights and, and whatnot. He'd be handing out his business cards, saying to all of his mates, "Say, God, look what this cancer's done to me! I used to be six foot six, and <laughs> <laughs> he's five foot seven. <laughs> yeah, that's him. Yeah. But even this one, look, this is the first delivery to Harrods. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. The stop at Harrods. Oh, well. too. The first massive shipment that went to first one to the states since 2005 we've been selling in america yeah we've gone through a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> it was good fun though this is when we're going to make a single motor, a single motor 
forget. These are basically sort of vacuum cleaner tubes because this is always the big constraining factor on golf trolleys is the folded size of the main support and the handle. But if you can make them telescopic, so then you get to fold everything in a lot smaller. And all, all of that I made in the, in the workshop. I just drew these up and got it in SLS parts. And, and that was it. Obviously, <laughs> with, with wheels on. <laughs> I reckon for every idea that we actually make, what do you reckon? There's at least half a dozen that never make it. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about the Christmas tree, Dad. Well, these are, this was actually in the foyer of, of our factory. This was the company that I had. So all those drawings you were looking at, they're just rack and pinions. So there's two pistons inside that go backwards and forwards and turn the, the, the central shaft, which is here, which has got a gear on it. And uh, so it turns the shaft 90 degrees and goes on top of a, of a 90 degree valve, which are ball valves, butterfly valve, plug valves. But all they do is just turn them. I mean, so all those drawings you saw were different versions of this and various ancillaries and ac uh, accessories. To the uninitiated, it just looks like a really bit of weird sort of contemporary art, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's just a reminder what paid for the house. Yep. <laughs> I always used to explain, whenever my friends asked what they were, my, my sort of one line simple explanation is that basically they're, they're very, very yeah. chunky handles for very chunky taps. Yeah, basically, that's the only thing. If you go to handle like that and do that, that's all these do. It was always so important to us to get that that look right, wasn't yeah, it? It's all about styling. But it was always going to be different. So if we're going to make a splash, then... Make it look... Good. Yeah, let's sort of do it with a bit of style. I mean, there's a bit of artistic license on this because they they will work. <laughs> it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> None of it would work. This is the, the problem with sketching, isn't it? So this is this is even um, before Stuart Golf. It was Stuart Concept. It was, yeah. It was. We're doing StuartConcepts.com on the, on the side of it. Ah, that's when we were going to have, we were going to start a design company, weren't it? Instead yeah. Of, instead of uh, making stuff. Golf company. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> God about that. Do you remember when me and Dave were making them out of foam yeah. to try and style them? and we'd made all these legs and things in it, but it was it looked fine, but it was really delicate. And Grandad came and sat on it, <laughs> sapped it in half and crushed it. We've been working on it for about three weeks. <laughs> this was the change point, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, no, that's a, that's a really, no, pretty much, that's the X series. That's it. it. That's it now. But, but really quickly, you've gone from- That's it. Carousel to, you know, we need to make a normal golf yeah. only, but, with that in your head, yeah. how would you design a, a sort of a, a normal yeah. golf trolley? That's the, the ticket from the launch of Sam Torrance's book. Remember that? We went yeah. to London for that day, which is what? 1st of October 2003. So like we had we had nothing, did we? We had no no PR, nobody knew who we were. Yeah. So when IMG said, well, do you want to come down to Sam's book launch? There'll be tons of press there. And we were like, all right. All right, right yeah. <laughs> so that was sort of the kind of unofficial soft launch of yeah, that, not Golf. This is when it really starts for me. Yeah. So this was in today's golf, uh, which um, I mean, still now is is a is a huge title, but back then was easily the biggest um, golf magazine in the UK. And so this was pages six and seven. We didn't pay for this either. This was completely editorial. But that's where we got the. That's where we started with the with the dream machine. Yeah, because that that so that original logo on that brochure doesn't have the dream machine no. part on it. Even that one isn't production. So even then, it wasn't wasn't quite right. So that that was. February 2004, so even then we weren't ready to actually ship anything by that point. This is October 2004, so by this point, this is when we've actually started um, shipping product. It we... kind of sums up the market at the time, doesn't it? So, it's the I mean, I don't base know. frame. Yeah, just a, a frame, a battery, um, and a motor. This is kind of what, what we're in it for. So the, the golf, golf world verdict, and an outstanding trolley, not only does it look good, but it performs better than any others tested. December 2005, the GQ's annual 100 best things in the world list. We were number 35. Superman is 34. Right. So we're one, we're one behind the Superman. We were ahead of the Range Rover Sport, David Beckham's football boots, and something else that was really cool at the time. Uh, I, I pulled this one out because that's the, this was the first custom trolley we ever did. That's the one in the, in the um, boardroom now. Yeah, exactly, it's hanging, it's hanging up in the boardroom. So this, this one was when we launched the F1. So 2008, that would have been, is this the coolest golf trolley in the world? Absolutely, it still is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you kept it all. 
I'm not this organized now. Every product in the world starts like, starts like this. All the Apple products, all, everyone starts the same way. Let's see if I can do this with, without getting it into the fields. Go on then, show us the way. Okay. What are we, what are we playing for, by the way? What are we playing for? <laughs> you don't what? like to know. I can see, I can see your brain, mm, your I dog's turning. Right, how am I going to win this one? <laughs> what should I give you, what? Shot a hole? Yeah. Shot a hole. Okay. Oh, lovely shot. You don't want that one back, do you? No, I'm taking that all day. <laughs> See, that's because there's money on it, isn't it? <laughs> Always over there. It's through, though. Yeah, it's hard to believe, though, that it's 20 years, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> 20 years. And the thing is, that's actually 20 years from launch. That's not 20 years from when we started messing around in the coach house. Yeah. We're not, we're not, we're nearing 25 for that, you know? Yeah. Which is weird, because like, I'm, I'm only 25, so. <laughs> yeah. You're catching me up fast. Yeah. If you get away with this. No, no, it's going right at a root, isn't it? Oh. <laughs> they were five? Yeah, five, but a few cheats in there, weren't there? A generous five, that's a all right. A generous five, yeah. That's all right, you get, you get granddad privileges. Yeah. So if I'm giving you a shot of hole then, that means I need to hold this for a half. You do. I like those odds. <laughs> Ridiculous. I tell you what, and that's still if that had the legs, that wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah it's funny being back at the Dimmock Grange. I wonder how many prototypes this course has seen through the years. Yeah, it's a few of ours, isn't it? Definitely. There's, I mean, there's quite a few. I remember when we were going out on, on quite a few rounds when we were developing things and, and Dave saying, right, don't blow it up. <laughs> but, don't tip it over. Don't tip it over. Well, the thing was, it was always, because we were always so adamant about the hill performance and the stability. Whenever I see a big hill, I'm going, I wonder if it'll we'll go, go up that. that yeah. <laughs> oh, not enough. Good part. Never in doubt. Ah. Nice. That's a beaut. So I guess after the F1, the, the next big thing that we did was follow. Yes. That was the, that's the step change. We, I mean, that took three years to, to develop and perfect it, to get into production and to really work. But as soon as that came out, it was one of those products that actually, I wasn't actually as optimistic about it as Dave was. No. But that was, that was an absolute step change for us. So we'd always been good at remote. That was our thing. We were head and shoulders. I mean, obviously I'm biased, but I think we were head and shoulders above uh, pretty much everybody else. But follow was just an absolute game changer. And also there wasn't anything that, that doing it as well. So we were, you know, we, it, it was real innovation, wasn't it? Probably the thing that we're, I'm most proud of, is, of of us as a business generally is that it's obviously people will see the products that we make and, and look at the innovation in that. But actually it's because the four of us are all, we've all got engineering heads on. Yeah. Actually, it's always a question of, yeah, but why is it like that? Why do you do it like that? What's, what's the reason for it? And that could be anything from the product and how we design and make things but also actually the business in general. Like right? the time we're always at our best is when actually we're doing the things that feel right to us, but kind of look wrong to everybody else. That has always been the thing that, yeah, follow was the, the big changer for that. Oh, not enough. Go. So of course after follow, I think it was 2017 is when we bought Edison. Yeah. Bought the, bought the new place. Yeah. So from, um, obviously, we were, we were in, in uh, up to our necks in mortgages and contracts and, and things like that. From, from your point of view, what do you think it did for us? Oh, it's major. And you've got to remember that I'd never, I'd never taken a move like that. I'd always sort to in old buildings. And the move from an old, what was a, I don't know, 16th century coach house and all sorts of uh, iggledy piggledy rooms everywhere to a nice big box, modern, clean, tidy. It had a, it had a, a step change effect on you all and on the business. Yeah. You all of a sudden jump from being a cottage industry to the to a, a proper a proper business on some sound footings and it's been the best thing you've done. We often joke about we felt like it was a proper business once we had a sign. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's sort of say it flippantly, but actually because our the coach house was a listed building, yeah. we couldn't have a sign. That's right. So we moved to Edison and all of a sudden we're in a proper industrial building. Yeah. 
with a sign and we feel like a million dollars. Yeah. It, was, it was such a big change for us. Perfect. The Rob always describes is that we were a, it was a cottage industry in an actual cottage. Yeah, it was an actual <laughs> cottage, yeah. But I think just like for every, like you're saying, for everybody in the business, all of a sudden it, it went up two or three sort of gears, didn't it? It is. That this is a professional manufacturing business. So if, although I'm not necessarily, I'm not a single figure handicapper, I'm not out sort of three times a week playing golf like a lot of customers are, actually the passion for me comes in sort of in the business and the product and the creation, that side of it. I think that's the I know, really I, cool I thing I think a lot of people realise how much fun it is building business. You know, just it's just fun. You know, you know I, I, I don't think I've ever worked a day in my life because I always enjoy it. And just build, it's just, it's just so much fun. Another good hit. It's just such a cool technology, isn't it? It's great. <laughs> it's one of those things that once it was a, it wasn't a straight line journey to get there, but once no. once you've got follow nailed, yeah. it's just the coolest thing on the <laughs> golf course. So but, I tend to we always have this this, this um, sort of frequently asked question of like when do you use follow? And it's and the, the textbook answer is, you know, when there's not things in the way and bunkers and cars and stuff like that. For me, I feel like I should be using follow when I've absolutely middle run, yeah. like when I deserve it. If I've earned follow, then yeah. that's, that for me is, is what I'm going to do. So, I mean, you've hit a good drive, you deserve this one. <laughs> that one. But I think that for, for us, as we were saying earlier on, that the, the game changer in the business, that we always had eye-catching products, we always got good PR. All of a sudden, we've got this amazing looking product, this great remote, and now we've got this extra layer. But it's, it's so much more than that because from a, we never, we haven't talked about this yet, but the thing about the product and the stability and the um, performance of the product is how is the experience it gives you on the course. Yeah. So all you're doing is walking. It's one of those things that, when, particularly now when I go to the States and do demos for people that have never used one of the products. And we normally wait two or three holes to start follow. And the first sort of five or 10 yards that somebody walks with follow when they've never done it. It's the, it's the, well, no, it's the look on their face. When they go, they start, they trust it and they go, oh, wow, <laughs> yeah. that's great. So I always say that our, our job is a, in a, from a marketing point of view is if we can somehow bottle that feeling of yeah. that first 10 paces of follow, yeah. then and we can somehow give that, put that in somebody's head somehow. Like that's, that's the, the perfect job that we can do. Yeah. Sure. The big market for us now is the US. I mean, you can see on, on some of our earlier pictures that we'd actually been selling in the States since 2005. Yeah. But it always been in really sort of small numbers and not getting anywhere. In particular areas as well. But that was the big leap for us. So we set up in, uh, set up our own business. That was the biggest thing we learned was if you're gonna do business in America. You've gotta be there. You need to be, you've gotta be there. So we set up the business. And the thing is, it only feels like yesterday. It's another yeah. one of those things, isn't it? That was. Where are we now? 2023. So we're eight years, pretty much, from Into our first it. one. What is it about the states that you like? P positive attitude, can do. Uh, uh, they don't throw barriers at you. It's, 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 I just find every time, every time I go there, I come back invigorated. It's not. It, I, I think I much prefer to live in, in in England, but in terms of business environment, there's nowhere better. I mean, it's been a hell of a a learning experience, but the progression has been mega, hasn't it? Yeah, been... So we've gone from basically one pallet in a third party warehouse to having now our own staff, um, our own premises. Yeah. But it's, it's just so much fun to be able to take the thing that we've created and, um, and built, in, built here in Gloucestershire yeah. um, and, and put it all over the world. And the thing is, you get the same kind of plaudits as well, which is great. One of the things that I'm most proud of that, again, most people won't see when you just sort of look at our website and see the golf trolleys and the tech and and that is, is the all the people behind it and the kind of culture that yeah. we've got. It's it's a nice atmosphere. Everyone seems to be enjoying themselves, and I, I know you go, you all go to great effort, efforts to to make that happen. Because at the end of the day, business is only people. Yeah. So you know, you can, these good products that you come up with, there's still people having to do it, and there's a lot of a lot of bits and pieces need to come together and be right, and that requires good people. And the thing is. 
you want them to enjoy themselves. You don't want to come to work every day and feel feel miserable. You want them to come and enjoy it. And you got to, to do that. You got to treat people right. So we, we've we've actually been asked to talk about about the future, which we can't really do. <laughs> this is one of those things. That, well, there's two reasons that we can't, to my mind, is that first of all. Um, obviously, we don't want to tell everybody what we're up to. No. But also, we know that for every every five or six good ideas that we have, ninety um, percent of them go in the bin. Yeah. <laughs> so actually, things that we're excited about now actually may not ever see the light of day. But I think for for anybody watching that's a current customer or um, thinking about investing in our brand and buying a product, is that we're we're never going to stop. We're never going to stop. Be honest with you, don't want to stop. It's more, it's more fun. Keep changing things. <laughs> <laughs>